Hello student, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to study the infection. My name is Dr. Sharad Deshmukh, SSJ Sol College, Arjuni Murga. Today we see the next part that is the sources of infection. Under sources of infection, we will have the different sources such as humans, animals, insects soil and water and food these are the main sources of the infection sources means from where the organisms are infecting the human beings so first we'll see the humans as a source of infection if human is concerned as a source of infection because it is the most common source of infection in the humans themselves and the parasite may originate from a patient or a carrier if you say the humans the source may be the patient means the person who is suffering from the disease or he is harboring the organism that is the carrier now what is the carrier a carrier is the person who harbors the pathogenic microorganism without suffering any ill effect because of it and this term you should always remember the term carrier means which is harboring the pathogenic organism but not suffering from any ill effect of it that is referred as the carrier now as far as the carrier is concerned we will see the different types of the carriers the carriers are divided into the different groups there are number of ways by which that carriers can be divided the first we will see the what is the carrier that is the healthy carrier the carrier who harbors the pathogen but has never suffered from the disease caused by the pathogen that is referred as the healthy carrier that means you may be the carrier because you are the healthy one never suffer from the disease but you may harbor the pathogenic organisms and that is referred as the healthy carrier the second one is the carrier that is the convulsion carrier here the convulsion carrier means the person who has recovered from the disease and continues to harbor the pathogen in his body so in the first case we have seen healthy means he has never suffered from the disease in the second case who has suffered from the disease who recovered from the disease and continue to harbor the pathogen in his body and he may act as a source of infection now this state may be the very common in various types of the diseases the person may be remain infective even after the recovery of the particular disease that's why it is referred as the convulsion carrier the in the other way the carrier may be classified depending on the duration of the carriage and the carriers are classified according to this method is that number one is temporary carrier and second is the chronic carrier and this is based on the duration of the carrier state the first we'll see about the temporary carrier so the temporary carrier it is the state which lasts less than six months the person become carrier of the particular disease but it generally do not last more than the six months that's why it is referred as the temporary carrier while in the other case the referred as the chronic carrier this may last for several years and sometimes even for the rest of the lifetime also once you get infected you may remain the carrier state even throughout the lifetime this is seen in some cases like the hepatitis b virus infection that is referred as the chronic carrier state this is the one other way to classify the temporary and the chronic carrier there is one more method by which the carriers can be classified the, that is the contact carrier and here the person who acquired the pathogen from a patient is called as the contact carrier here we have already seen the patient which act as a carrier 
but a person who acquired the pathogen from a patient is referred as the contact carrier while the term used is the paradoxical carrier that refers to a carrier who acquires the pathogen from the another carrier so this is related to the first classification where the carrier may be the patient or the carrier the source of infection but if you acquire the pathogen from a contact carrier then it is referred as uh, sorry when you acquire the pathogen from a patient then it is referred as the contact carrier and if you acquire the pathogen from the another carrier it is referred as the paradoxical carrier now we will come to the next source of infection that is the most common is the animals the some pathogens are able to infect both the human beings as well as the animals hence they act as a source of the human infection so the animal can be infected as well as the human beings are infected by the same pathogen that's why the animals can act as a source of infection for the human beings and these animals which serve to maintain the parasite in nature and they act as a reservoir of the human infection sometimes they may not be harmful to the animal but they maintain this parasite in nature and act as a reservoir and they act as a base source of the infection and they are called as a reservoir host because they are constantly harboring this pathogen in their body and they are able to transmit any time to the human and act as a source of infection in case of the animals the infectious diseases which are transmitted from the animals to the human beings are called as the zoonosis so those diseases which are transmitted from animal to the human are referred as a separate category as a zoonosis or they are also known as the zoonotic diseases so the zoonotic diseases they may be the bacterial they may be the viral they may be the protozoal or maybe the helminthic the best example of the bacterial zoonotic disease is the plague which is transmitted to the human being from the rats similarly from the other animals the disease transmitted is the brucellosis which is transmitted from the animal to the human beings this is another bacterial infection the most important viral infection which is transmitted from the human transmitted to the human from the rabies is the from the dog is the rabies infection which is commonly seen in the rural area the rabies when the rabid dog bite to the human that will transmit the infection to the human beings the protozoal infection the best example is the toxoplasmosis which is acquired by the human being from the cats similarly the helminthic infection which is acquired by the human being from the dogs is the hereditary diseases which is are transmitted from the dogs so there are number of diseases which can be transferred from animal to the human being and these are under the category of the zoonotic diseases now in this case the third most important is the insect and they are also referred as the vectors and particularly the blood sucking insect may transmit the pathogen from one person to the other although they may not be harmful to the insect but they are able to transmit from one person to the other one so diseases are called as the arthropod borne diseases so the dose infections or the diseases transmitted via vector are referred as the arthropod borne diseases and the insects such as the mosquitoes ticks mites flies fleas and lice that transmit the infections are called as the vectors so the term we should refer at the insect which are able to transmit the infection are referred in general are the vectors the more specifically these are classified into the mechanical vector and a biological vector the mechanical vector means the transmission may be mechanically for example the dysentery or the typhoid bacilli which are transmitted by the domestic flies this fly the sit on the fecal matter and along with their body they carry the pathogen and when they transmit to the food or water 
that infection can be transmitted to the human being. That's why they are referred as the mechanical vector, where there is no any change occur in the organism, only they are mechanically transferred to the human being. The dysentery and the typhoid is the best example of the disease which is transmitted by the mechanical vector. While the another term is the biological vector, the pathogens which multiply in the body of the vector and undergoes its part of life cycle in it and such vectors are called as the biological vectors. For example, Aedes aegypti mosquito which is transferring the yellow fever. The best well known example is the Anopheles mosquito that is the female Anopheles which transmit the malaria to the human beings. Here when the this mosquito suck the blood from the infected person that uh, mosquito will carry this pathogen that is malaria parasite along with them and it will undergo the process of the other part of the life cycle and then the mosquito become infective to the human being and when it bites to the normal individual that will transmit this the malaria parasite to the new human beings and that's why they are referred as the biological vectors because they are passing some part of the life cycle in the particular that vector. The interval between the time of entry of the pathogen into the vector and the vector when become infective is called as the intrinsic incubation period. Just I have mentioned the example of the uh, female anaphylus mosquito which transmit the malaria or the malaria parasite. When it sucks the blood, it carry the pathogen that is the malaria parasite and it undergo the changes in the hum uh, body of the animal, uh, sorry, the mosquito and then mosquito become infective. That time period is referred as the extrinsic incubation period. Some insects may act as a reservoir host. For example, the ticks in relaxing fever and spotted fever. They are commonly present in these some insects and they will carry this pathogen along with them and that's why they act as a reservoir. So now we will see the remaining in the next lecture. Thank you very much.